Back on Economic Bus, this program can also brief you through Star Hub Asia Channel 1 to 1 and MNC Singapore. With me, Erwin Surya Brata, Ms. Dev Professor Jason Pomeroy, founding principal at Pomeroy Studio, as well as keynote speakers at the forthcoming New Cities Summit in Jakarta. We'll talk about the main strategic role our government can do in terms of developing and creating the best ideal legal framework as well as regulatory environment to support this good urban planning, especially regarding the infrastructure sector. What needs to be prioritized at once, understanding the current need? Wow. I, <laughs> I personally think there's actually a two-pronged thing. I think that number one, you need good infrastructure. Number two, you need a public open space infrastructure. Now, when we think about infrastructure, I look at it like a bit like an elastic band, right? You can stretch an elastic band and at some point it will break. Now, the thing is, when we think about cities globally, um, the city will reach what's called the elastic limit when it just has so many people moving around the streets and, and the street network that it's actually becoming almost suffocating. Mm -hmm. There is almost like what I call an accessibility suffocation. There is just no room to move. The and traffic. cities simply cannot bear it anymore. Correct. I mean, the traffic that I experienced yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. So what we find is that um, there is only one way, and that is up. You may have to do overground transportation systems, mm. like light rapid transport systems, like what we see in Kuala Lumpur, or you go MRT, like in Singapore, mm. where you go mass rapid transport systems underground. Now, what this does, it gives you an opportunity to get around the city incredibly quickly. The infrastructure is there to actually aid your productivity of your workforce. I mean, I guess anybody experiencing traffic, wherever it is in the world, are going to get frustrated if you can only have one or two meetings in a day because you're caught in traffic. But if you're able to take four or five or six meetings in a day because the infrastructure is allowing you to move quickly and with authority, I think that's a good thing. So I think that one thing is infrastructure. The other thing is open spaces. Uh, when we think about the open spaces filled with greenery, whether it's public parks or sky courts or sky gardens, these are spaces that will actually foster community, mm -hmm. allow people to come together, socially interact, go and grab a coffee mm -hmm. rather than going to sit in uh, a, 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 a small space just playing with your iPhone mm -hmm. and looking at LinkedIn or Facebook. You know, I think it's very important for us to consider these alternative social spaces, especially when, as we densify our cities. So uh, I designed a, uh, a place in Manila uh, in modern Makati called Century City, and it's a very, very high-density urban development. And it's a wonderful example of a compact city. I mean, it has an incredibly high plot ratio of 16. We've got, uh, I had the privilege of designing the tallest building in the Philippines, which will be Trump Tower Manila when completed in 2016. And what this does, it demonstrates that it has all of the necessary requirements the ability to live, work and play all within the same vicinity. Allow well, me to interrupt you, Professor. Contrary to what I believe so far, when we talk yeah. about the idea of having compact city, this yeah. is something really come to my interest because I thought it might be more organized when we try to create the blocks or cluster. Mm. This is business district, this is economic district, and that is for infotainment or entertainment yeah. district. Yes, yes. But turns out that sometimes it might necessarily going to work well, especially giving yeah. ASEAN context. Why is it? Why we should have this kind of integrated city concept instead of being <coughs> clustered or being blocked or well, being separated? I, I think that uh, what we need to bear in mind is that this is very much a 20th century mode of planning mm. whereby you actually put uh, working in one area, living in another area, playing in another area, and you then just rely on yourself jumping into an air-conditioned box and start trundling around in between. Not very sustainable, also very, very land-intensive. You're using up a lot of surface area. Why not you know, compact into one area, like Hong Kong, like Tokyo, like Singapore? Here are compact cities that have very good infrastructure, MRT, LRT systems All right, that allow people to move around yes. efficiently. Let's move to the other second half of the talk show after this sure. one. Make sure you are think that's on Economic Bus. We are going to discuss more about eco-architecture for sustainable city concept. Watch our live streaming through okzone.tv and sidonews.com.